Hi, I'm Scott, and today I'm going to show you how I got this floor for free on Dab It Yourself. Alrighty, new project. Well, as you can see, I am no longer down here. My office has been moved upstairs. If you haven't seen the video where I did the French cleat office wall, I'll put a link to that in the description. But what do we want to do? Well, when we moved in, this wood floor only was a small piece right here. And then it started, uh, I think it was over here. Yeah, right about there. And then this was all carpet. But we had a huge trail going from the front door and from the garage door. So we had a flooring company come in and put a floor through here. Well, wife wants this to be flooring too. Challenge is, this is no longer available. So, how would we luck out? Well, my neighbor took out his floor, which was the same as this, because we live in a track home community, and we stacked it up in the garage. Today, I measured this, and it is 108 square feet. And what does 108 square feet tell me? Well, I need about 60, 58, 60 of full length slats that are about four feet long to fill this area. So here's that floor that my neighbor took out. Some scrap over there and there's a little bit more tucked over here, but we went through the pile and these are all the complete pieces. 63 of them. So that's close. We needed between 58 and 60. There's 63 here, but fortunately, we got a brand new box right there. That's 16 more pieces. So I think I'm sitting good, just shy of 80, and we should be able to do this. So let's get started. Some of you may be wondering why I didn't just put in new floor, like maybe a LifeLock vinyl or LifeProof or whatever it is from Home Depot. Well, because I don't feel like doing the floor in my kitchen and my dining room and part of my family room and the hallway right here, all through here. So, free, just labor now. Like any flooring project, the first thing you got to do is remove all the furniture. So we got the couch, end tables, lamps, and anything else out of the room. And then I started by removing all of the baseboards. To remove the baseboards, it was just a matter of cutting the caulking with a sharp razor knife and then pulling them away with a pry bar. And the final piece was removing this transition strip. So getting rid of carpet's pretty easy. Just kind of grab a corner. Pull it off the tack strip. And what I do is just kind of fold it over on itself about a foot to two feet. Like that. And I take a razor blade and cut right down the fold on the mesh side. And as you can see, it comes clean. Get yourself a nice little roll, like that. Easy to carry, not too heavy. And we'll fit in my truck, take to the dump. While I was removing the carpet, we decided to keep a four by four piece of it to do a repair somewhere else. We haven't made the decision yet if we're gonna replace the carpet in the rest of our house. I was pretty fortunate the foam came right up and they hadn't used glue when they installed it. So I have the pad and the carpet all pulled up, as you can see. And now I've got some tack strip and there's some staples that they use to put the pad down. Well, you can use these, a hammer and a pry bar and a pair of nippers to pull all this stuff up and wedge this out. But guess what? This is what I use. This is an ice scraper and a roofing shovel. And this will make quick work of this. This may take me an hour to do with these three tools, but with these two, I can probably do it in about 10 minutes. Okay, so here's the plan. In each row, there are two pieces. So example, one left, one right, 
one left or two left, two right. The goal is this piece will stay here and then this piece here will go all the way against that wall and then I'll fill in in between those with whole pieces. If I did my math correct, that will work. Um, even though it'd be nice if I could just pull it and slide it, I can't do that. So I actually have to take all these out, but that's why I wanna number them. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and number all these pieces so I know where they go. And then we'll start with one row, work along this wall, put one right back in, and then move to two and move across. So let's start numbering these. So I got everything numbered and I think I'm gonna have to take out that baseboard and probably that little transition strip in front of the door. But the other thing, when the installer came and put this floor in, he glued down the transition strip. So once I get these pieces out, I'm gonna to have to come back in and scrape and clean this glue out before we can move to putting the rest of the floor down. Removing this floor was relatively easy. It wasn't glued or stapled down, so it was just a matter of picking it up and unclicking the tongues, making sure I didn't damage them, setting the lefts on the lefts and the right on the right, and making sure they're ready for installation again. Okay, I'm really only gonna use three tools today. I'm gonna use a table saw to do my long cuts. I'm gonna use a miter saw to do my cross cuts, and any of those little funky cuts or corner cuts, I'm gonna use a jigsaw. You can use just about any tool you have that you're comfortable with cutting, but as long as you can make nice long straight lines, you can get it done. Okay, so this board is too long and what you don't want to do is mark here and cut here because you want to keep that tone. You want the cut to be on this other end. So the best way to do that is to flip the board over, put it where it needs to be. Remember leaving your 3 8 gap under the wall that for expansion but will be covered by the baseboard. And just draw your line and that's where I'll cut that end off. So there's the first row in. I'm going to go ahead and put the second row in and I'm going to actually use this seam in the subfloor to make sure I stay aligned with this end compared to that end and that's going to help me set the rest of the floor. So it's the next day. Uh, I had to quit early last night for Father's Day. But if you notice on this side, all my numbers are in order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm at the 11th row now. If you come down here, I'm definitely not in order. But what I'm doing is if I need a longer piece, I'll just grab one from either a, a row further or maybe one I already had to skip that was longer. The whole idea here is not to have to cut a brand new length. And I only had to do that once, and that was here. I'd cut a half inch off that one because I didn't have one long enough. But I'm 11 rows in, and I am almost halfway in. And the cool part is, is see that line right there? I just measured it, same distance there, same distance there. So more of the same. Lay the numbered one, add full boards, find a piece that fits this in, cut it to length, move to the next row.
So after doing this whole floor, I've come across my first obstacle, which is this uh, heat register vent. And fortunately, the uh, cover has a nice lip around it. So I'm just gonna make this a little wide. I'm gonna mark it here and here. And I'm gonna take this one off, slide it down the row so I can see where this opening is. And then I'm gonna mark it right here. And I'm gonna go out in the garage and cut that with the saber saw. Not the prettiest cut in the world, but it'll be covered. And if for some reason you had to have this edge showing, obviously putting some blue tape down or cutting it from the other side or using a different type of method, maybe a razor knife or something, you'd get a nice clean edge. But it doesn't matter for this, this looks fine. All right, I'm done, six hours later. So we're gonna get this cleaned up so we can get ready for baseboards and the transition pieces. So the product I used was Evoke engineered wood flooring with an integrated underlayment. That's why I didn't have to put one down when I was laying this floor. Originally we wanted to buy new that matched our existing house, but it's no longer for sale. I was super fortunate that my neighbor had just removed his floor and it matched what we had in our house. We live in a track home community. So I was able to put this floor in for free. It took me about two days. Not too hard. If you're familiar with the click and snap system, you could do this easily. Uh, I was super fortunate that it went in really easy. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit the bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right down here. Thanks for watching. Data yourself.